So after squaring one end of each leg, I'll go ahead and cut them to length. So next I'm going to turn my attention away from the legs for a little while and start working on the rails. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut some rails to rough length from this uh, piece of cherry. So before I cut these rails to width, I'm going to go ahead and flatten one face of the joiner and then I'll plane these to thickness. For the front top and bottom rail, I'm going to use a piece of 8 quarters so that I can get the required width that I need. Before I plane these front top and bottom rails to thickness, I'm going to go ahead and flatten one face and square up one edge. So after creating a straight edge on both my side rails and my back rail, I can cut these to width. Now that I have all the rails cut to width and thickness, it's time to cut them to length. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut one end square. Now I'm just going to batch cut to length the back rail and the front top and bottom rails. For the end grain mortises in the rails, I'm just going to mark for a half inch shoulder. In order to make all the end grain mortises and all my rails, I'm going to use my horizontal mortiser which slides real nicely on these bronze bushings and steel shafts. So for the mortises and the legs, I'm going to again use my horizontal mortiser. And this time I'm going to make two deep mortises about uh, one inch deep, which are separated by a more shallow mortise. So instead of having one wide tenon, the plan is to have two tenons that are about one inch deep which are separated by a shallower stub tenon. Now I need to create the joinery for the rails that go above and below the drawer. And for that, I'm gonna use double floating tenons. So the tenons will run in this direction, the same direction as the leg, and they'll be offset by almost 3 eighths of an inch. It's very tempting to just use one tenon and run it in this direction and have it insert into the leg this way. But this actually creates a much weaker joint because what we have in this case is the face grain of the tenon resting on top of end grain in the leg. And the end grain in the leg will actually soak up most of the glue and create a much weaker joint. So my plan of attack here to make sure that the mortises line up in each piece is I'm gonna make the bottom mortise in each component and then raise the router bit and make the second one. So I'm going to taper each inside face of each leg and to do that I'm going to use my tapering jig and if you'd like more information on my tapering jig you can find it at my website and you'll see a link in the description. So in order to remove the saw and burn marks left from the tapering job I'm going to use my joiner. I'm going to make my loose tenon stock from a piece of scrap cherry. I went ahead and planed my tenon material to thickness. Now I just need to cut them to length. I forgot to round over my tenon stock before I batch cut them all out. So I'm going to do that now. So I made a notch within my loose tenon stock so that it's able to fit around this web that we created within the mortise. So instead of having one long deep mortise, this webbing will actually give this mortise a lot more strength. And the notch that we created in the tenon should help this tenon resist cracking from seasonal changes in humidity. 
I'm going to create the illusion that the bottom drawer divider is not as thick as it really is. And in order to pull that off, I'm going to chamfer the underside of it. And to accomplish that, I'm going to use my tilting router table fence. I have my router table fence tilted to about 60 degrees and I have the bearing of my pattern bit sunk below the surface of the table. Next I'm going to rip out a piece of cherry that's going to be used to support the drawer slide. I need to do this now before I glue up the carcass because this is going to be half lapped into the bottom drawer rail. We'd like our drawer slides to be nice and flat, so I'm going to go ahead and flatten this face at the joiner. I need to half lap this drawer slide support so that I can insert it into the bottom drawer rail, which will also be half lapped. Now I need to mortise some material out of my lower drawer rail to receive the drawer slide support. So that this piece has room to expand and contract a little bit, I intentionally left the mortise a little bit larger so that there's a little bit of play left and right. So that I'll know where to put the mortise on the back rail, I'm going to take the lower drawer rail and rest it on top of the back rail and just make a mark. So for the mortise in the back rail that's going to receive the drawer slide support, I'm just going to use a Forstner bit to hog out most of the material and then just clean it up with a chisel. 